In the summer of 1954, anyone driving past the sweet cornfields of California's Central Valley might have rubbed their eyes in disbelief. Rising above the tall stalks was what looked like a small tractor perched on steel stilts, its operator sitting nearly eight feet off the ground, rolling slowly through rows of corn that would tower over any ordinary machine. This was no factory-built implement. It was the creation of a California farmer who faced a problem that had plagued corn growers since the hybrid revolution began two decades earlier. His solution combined mechanical ingenuity with an understanding that sometimes the best answer is also the strangest looking one. The machine started life as a conventional 21 horsepower crawler tractor, the kind that had become essential equipment on California farms where soft soil conditions often bog down wheeled machines. But this crawler had been transformed into something entirely new. The builder raised the entire tractor chassis, including the motor and transmission, so there would be 78 inches of clearance beneath it. Tall, steel side frames served as the stilts that supported the tractor in this elevated position. Additional sprockets and links of track were installed on each side, creating an extended track system that climbed high before returning to ground level. The result defied conventional wisdom about what a tractor should look like, but it worked. The machine could roll through standing corn that reached six feet or higher, dusting crops with pesticides and carrying workers who would reach down to remove the tassels from female corn plants. Understanding why anyone would build such an unusual machine requires understanding the agricultural revolution that made it necessary. In 1933, less than 1% of American corn came from hybrid seed. By 1944, that number had exploded to over 83%. The reason was simple. Hybrid corn produced dramatically higher yields than traditional open-pollinated varieties. Farmers who made the switch saw their harvests increase substantially, sometimes by 20 bushels per acre or more. But hybrid corn came with a labor-intensive requirement. To produce hybrid seed, farmers had to plant two different varieties in the same field and ensure that only one variety provided the pollen. This meant physically removing the tassels from the female plants before they could release their own pollen. The process was called detasseling, and until the mid-1950s, it was done almost entirely by hand. During the peak weeks of detasseling season, seed corn companies employed armies of workers who walked through muddy fields, reaching up to pull tassels from plants that often grew taller than the workers themselves. The work was exhausting, time-sensitive and expensive. Some farmers and equipment builders began experimenting with machines that could either carry workers through tall corn more efficiently, or apply pesticides during the growing season when conventional tractors could no longer enter the fields without damaging the crop. The California stilt tractor represented one farmer's answer to both challenges. The choice to start with a crawler tractor rather than a wheeled machine was no accident. California farmers had long favored tracked equipment for good reason. The state's agricultural history was shaped by the soft, rich soils of the Sacramento River Delta and the Central Valley. Wheeled tractors often sank in these conditions, especially during irrigation season, or after rainfall. Crawler tractors distributed their weight across a much larger surface area, allowing them to work in conditions that would stop a wheeled machine cold. The Cleet Track Company, later acquired by Oliver, had built small agricultural crawlers since the 1920s that were particularly popular with California farmers. These compact machines could pull plows, cultivators, and other implements through challenging conditions while providing the traction needed for serious field work. The stilt tractor's builder understood that his elevated machine would face even greater stability challenges than a conventional crawler. The tracked undercarriage provided a stable platform that wheels simply could not match. Even with the operator sitting nearly eight feet off the ground, the machine could work in wet conditions when rubber-tired tractors would bog down completely. The need for high clearance equipment intensified after World War II as new agricultural chemicals transformed American farming. The insecticide DDT had proven its worth during the war, controlling disease-carrying insects among military personnel and civilian populations. After 1945, it became available for agricultural use. 
Farmers quickly discovered that DDT and other new pesticides could protect their crops from insects that had plagued agriculture for generations. The herbicide 2,4-D arrived in 1945 and changed weed control completely. It was the first chemical that could selectively kill broadleaf weeds while leaving corn and other grass crops unharmed. Sales exploded from £631,000 in 1946 to over £5 million just one year later. But applying these chemicals presented challenges. While airplanes could dust large acreages quickly, Aerial application was expensive and imprecise. Ground-based sprayers offered more control, but conventional tractors could not enter cornfields once the crop reached any significant height without crushing plants and creating losses that outweighed the benefits of treatment. The California Stilt Tractor solved this problem elegantly. With 78 inches of clearance, it could straddle two rows of corn while its mounted dusting equipment treated 12 rows simultaneously. The framework across the back held tanks and spray booms that distributed pesticides evenly across the crop. The machine served double duty during detasseling season. When it was time to remove tassels from the female corn plants, workers would ride on hangers suspended from the elevated tractor dropping down between the rows alongside the machine. This arrangement kept workers from having to walk through muddy fields while still giving them access to the tassels at the top of each plant. The crawler's slow, steady pace allowed careful work, and the elevated platform gave the operator a commanding view of the field to ensure no rows were missed. Similar high-clearance machines were being developed elsewhere during this period. In Iowa, Ray Hagee had built a self-propelled personnel carrier in 1946 to help with detasseling operations at his seed corn company. That machine would eventually lead to the founding of Hagee Manufacturing and the development of the first self-propelled high-clearance sprayer in 1947. The California Stilt Tractor represented the same spirit of innovation, adapted to local conditions and built with locally available equipment. Rather than waiting for manufacturers to produce specialized machines, this farmer created exactly what his operation needed. The age of hand detasseling was already drawing to a close when the stilt tractor was photographed in 1954. Plant geneticists were developing corn varieties with a cytoplasm that caused male sterility, allowing seed companies to produce hybrid seed without removing tassels manually. By the mid-1950s, this breakthrough began transforming the industry. Seed companies could greatly reduce their labor costs as the need for manual detasseling diminished. The massive summer workforce that once descended on cornfields across America would become smaller each year. High clearance equipment remained valuable for spraying and other operations, but the specific configuration of the California stilt tractor became less essential. Commercial manufacturers began producing purpose-built high-clearance sprayers that offered the same capability without requiring dramatic modifications to existing equipment. The stilt tractor snapped in those California fields in 1954 represents something larger than a single piece of modified farm equipment. It embodies the practical ingenuity that has always characterized American agriculture. Faced with a specific problem, this builder did not wait for a manufacturer to produce a solution. He looked at the equipment available to him, understood the mechanical principles involved, and created something that had never existed before. The tracked undercarriage provided stability. The elevated chassis cleared the crop. The extended track system made the whole arrangement work. Other farmers across the country were making similar modifications during this period. An Oliver OC3 crawler was modified to provide 72 inches of crop clearance for spraying and detasseling, using a similar approach of raising the tractor body while keeping the track frames at ground level. The tracks climbed up and over the drive sprockets, creating the distinctive stilted appearance that made observers do a double take. These machines rarely survived past their useful working lives. They were tools built to solve immediate problems, and when those problems were solved by other means, the machines were often scrapped or returned to conventional configuration. The photograph of the California stilt tractor preserves a moment when American farmers were still building their own solutions to agricultural challenges. Before the age of computerized equipment and corporate consolidation, a farmer with welding skills and mechanical knowledge could create exactly what he needed from parts he had available.
The machine may have looked strange crawling through those cornfields more than 70 years ago, but to the farmers who used it, the stilt tractor was simply the right tool for the job, built by someone who understood that necessity remains the mother of invention, even when invention looks like a tractor on stilts.